a strong rain. What do we got here? It's not breakfast. The mud is so deep. Like someone's had a real bad day. Ah! <laughs> G'day from wherever you're watching in the world. My name is Aaron or Az, and I'm out here on one of the most remote stretches of coastline in Australia and most likely the world. I've been out here, it'll be just over three weeks. I was by myself for the majority of it. But my mate Greg has just joined me to do a stretch of the Blue Highway. And we've got to travel about 100 miles to get from point A to point B where we want to camp. We're going to explore the whole coastline along the way. We need to catch food at some stage and we want a beach comb for treasure. Greg and I have been mates for close to 15 years. Greg's a life liver, a surfer, a builder by trade, a traveler, a family man and the father of, of young Billy, and just a great man. We hadn't been on an adventure together, I'm ashamed to say, for close to 10 years. But when the stars aligned, Greg flew and took two days to do so, to meet me in remote Northern Australia and join me on a week of this month long expedition. All clear, mate? Anchors up, motors are on. Let's go on one hell of an adventure. You got him? You were literally in the water for like 45 seconds. Beautiful fish. Woo! That's lunch. Lunch. Come on, That's first drop, Greg. Oh! <laughs> Is it a good fish? Oh, mate. What do we got here? Shark. Oh! <laughs> oh. Shark. <laughs> That's it's not breakfast. Definitely not breakfast. At well, least it didn't snap us off. We've just anchored the boat up and we've come onto this island which is really low set full of mangroves and fringing reef and generally a lot of the islands along the coast here that have a, like a decent sized mangrove system is a good shot at getting a mud crab so Greg and I are going to go for a bit of a scope a yet to have a feed of mud crabs together. And I haven't had them for a couple of weeks, so fingers crossed we can catch some muddies. The good thing about them as well is even though we've got this tusky for lunch, the mud crabs, if we can get them live, they'll stay fresh for quite a while. So let's see how we go. Just walking along here, scanning along the high tide mark. And then I'm gonna walk back on that next tide mark along the edge, see if anything's washed in. Just the unfortunate reality, so, so much rubbish and a firm reminder that we just need to be so onto what we use. Really, really conscious about everything we consume. Like I've been beach combing for well, probably 15 years, but the last couple of weeks pretty intensively. And I'm pretty sure that is from around a glass bubble, which I really want to find, but it's long smashed, I'd say. It'll make when I do find one even more, more bloody rewarding. A bit of old fishing net might come in handy for trying to trap some food in. I think this is what they use to put like slugs or live craze in. But this one looks like it's been mauled by a shark or a croc or something. There's just huge holes the whole way through it, but I'm sure we'll find a use for it. There was a huge crab just sitting on here, but it literally spooked from like eight meters away. <laughs> You've been doing your yoga or what? Practice, eh? It's like yoga, but everything wants to bite you and it's spike you. Like I'm just having a walk along this section where you can see the high tide has just been lapping up against the edge of the island. And with it, as always, a lot of rubbish, but a few usable treasures in amongst them as well. That is a serious score. It doesn't look like it's been in the ocean that long. It's like a good fuel tank. This is probably one of the more hectic finds I've seen in the mangroves, beach carmen. It's like a six meter boat, engine and all. Oh, someone has come seriously unstuck. Far out. Oh, sorry, sorry mate. It's a bird nest right here. Fuck, someone's had a real bad day. Doesn't take nature long to, to take over. There's another little nest there. Little bird nest. Oh, that sucks. So on low tide, what we're looking for is either big pieces of structure, like timber, rock, any like large scale debris, like a boat, where the crabs are going to be sitting up and nestled up in, or alternatively, big holes that they've dug to call home. So that's what we're scanning for. We're putting in a fair bit of effort. It's bloody hot, but fingers crossed we can get a, get a feed of crabs for tonight. Yeah, it could be a little hole under there, but there's two sitting in there. Just gonna... oh, oh. I might go around the back. Yeah, well you, you go one, I'll go the other, mate. How far apart are they? You can see them there, right under that little bit of structure there. Yeah, this mud is thick. Oh, they made a wire out of me. Where is it? 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, grab it, mate. Ah! That's a female, anyway. Feisty female. Feisty female. Was there a, another one? There was. There was two there. That's all right. We'll find more, mate. Good spot, no? Oh, my God. He's a bundy, isn't he? That's a big crab. There's a big mud crab right under this. Go. Go in. Let him come back. Let him come to me. Bring it out and try to grab it live, mate. Try pin it down from there and we'll grab it. We just gotta get behind it though. Don't let them claws touch, eh? You're right, mate. Just try turn it around. That's it. Even pull it out, just out into the clear on, by its nipper. Well done, mate. Hey, Muddy. Nice. Well done. Good job, brother. That's a good feed. That's dinner, eh? All right, mate. That's food for later. Mm -hmm. That's a good little find, mate. Beautiful. There's a really big hole here. There's a ginormous mud crab in it. Hold him down. Hang on. I'll get him down. He's trying to get away. You got a hand on him? You ready? I've got him. I've got his back hand. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, we put, wow. we put some time in for that. Beautiful. That's a big muddy eh? Look at the big purple nippers. Blue and purple nippers. We got one each now, mate. Oh geez, that was risky business, eh? Lovely. Let's get out of here before this tide comes ripping on in. We use these recycled coffee bags to keep them. And ideally when they're live, you just put them in air, keep them wet, and they'll last a couple of days. It's the tucker box. <laughs> it's spiky, isn't it? You gotta go lower, mate. Use your mangrove yeah. yoga. The mud is so deep. We need to make our way back to the boat and get some water. Real quick. Fuck oh, heaven, mate. So thirsty. But we got treasure. All I took in my bag when we go for a walk is a PLB in case something real, real bad happens. Someone can find you and a machete. That's it. Bag to keep your treasures. Today's treasures, two lures. We're going to throw hooks on them and that'll be great for mackerel, trevally, catching dinner at some stage. Greg and I found a Nautilus shell each. He got one for his little boy, Billy Barramundi. I got one for myself. What's probably the most practical score? How we got that? Proper like 24 litre fuel tank. So I'll get that clean it out, rig it up, and have it at home. That's a good find. These, are, these aren't cheap. It pays to have a bit of a scan on the high tide mark. Where the wind hits, all sorts of shit washes up, so recycle what you can. All the beach treasure's amazing, but this is the real catch of the day because it keeps us going for a bit longer. Look at that. Big purple blue nippers, which you generally only see on these mangrove islands. You can tell it's a big male by that V straight in the middle. It's heavy too, it's full, so it's gonna be Smack bang full of meat. Greg and I got one each. We'll eat them in the next couple of days. Wow. Found that lure on the beach. So I'm gonna whack a couple of trebles on now. We'll give it a troll in a likely spot in the next few days. We'll try and convert this into dinner. What's the game, mate? We've got a bit of an elaborate meal ahead of us. We do, mate. We, we definitely do. Bit of tusky. We got earlier this morning. A little bit of salt in there and some pepper. You're on the rice, mate. Coconut rice. I appreciate you for catching the tusky. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate you for making the rice. <laughs> All right, there's some of the finished product first feed we've had all day. 1 p.m. Bit of rice, bit of black spot tusky. Happy, 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 happy. Mm. The soy sauce, for the salty goodness. That's number one. So Greg's never popped before, like popping, surface fishing, and I hooked him up a popper, rod and reel, and we've just come to the edge of this reef here. So fingers crossed, I can try and get him his first fish on top water. Go again, mate, out over those white rocks there. The right in the strike zone, mate, that's the honey hole. Oh. 
We've just arrived in an island which is the proposed site for camping tonight. It's got an amazing anchorage. It's really calm, really sandy. A little bit of fringing reef and a fair bit of a, a weather faced sandy patch on this island for a little bit of a beach comb now, as per the usual. Yeah, anchorage is, like I've spoken about before if you've watched previous videos, it's one of the most important things, especially this time of the year because you get a lot of really like rogue storms build up with the hot weather during the day. So we have a bit of a beach comb now, maybe a fire on sunset. But we've got that tusky and or mud crabs for dinner. Let's see how we go. <laughs> a popper action mate. Oh hey, another shark. Big shark. Try to get him up mate, we'll lose the popper. How'd your beach combing efforts go, mate? Could have been added that. The slipper fits. Is that the 2023 new edition? That's the new steez, mate. It was pretty clued on, but there was a, I don't know, maybe metre and a half croc just sitting there, only small. Still really cool to see in clean water and this far off the coast, where like we're on an island on the Great Barrier Reef and there's crocs just literally just there, boats anchored just here. So, that's all happening. Shark. Can you see it? Was right here. Yeah. Oh, shark! Three for three. Three for three, eh? Greg's three for three on the black tip reef shark. We'll get that hook out of you, buddy. We'll get you back in the drink. You will probably get an appreciation for that, but my elbow okay. is swollen up like a baseball. I think from like either pulling the anchor a lot or just lifting a lot with it by myself. It is really quite quite painful. And that's just the nature of it. Here's the other one for comparison. All right, mate, do you have a golden moment or an honourable mention or any highlights from today? Pretty cracker day, wasn't it? From start to finish, two days in one. Although, grabbing those crabs. Grabbing the crabs? <laughs> that little treasure hunt was pretty special. <laughs> Trudging for three hours through yeah, the mangroves? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it's not for everyone, man, but yeah. That was a bit of an adventure, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, man. My golden moment would have to be when you jumped in the water and 30 seconds later swum up with lunch and dinner, Tusky. I was like, mate, whatever you do, just make sure, like, let me know if you're gonna shoot something, I'll come down and I'll film you shoot it. And you just, just that excited, just every fish, you just jumped in there, just fish everywhere, just, oh, boom, just shot it, like, literally 30 seconds. Yeah. So that was good, really nice fish. Honorable mention to the weather, I honestly thought we were gonna have, like, 15 to 18 knots of wind right on the nose traveling today. And yeah, it was, like, for the most part, just really, really, favorable conditions, it was beautiful. So, really enjoyed today, and as you very accurately put, it was like two days in one. Good value for money. It was, wasn't it, mate? Yeah, good yeah. bang for your buck <laughs> yeah, today. It really was. It was awesome. Yeah, looking forward to eating that tusky and rice meal again for the second time. I honestly think that I've had fish and rice probably 90% of the time this trip, but that's one of the best sunsets by far. Look at that. That's so good. I'm gonna give you our quote of the day, thanks to you, Greg, which was doing this here, doing this makes so much sense, which it just does. Like it's why we, I guess, crave to do it so much. It's why, you know, a lot of you guys message us and saying, oh, we went out camping or we went spearing for the first time or, you know, did this with our kids or our family or went out here solo, whatever it is, getting out of nature, getting back to basics. It honestly does fast, makes an incredible amount of sense and it feels right, feels good. It was like two days in one and looking forward to doing it all over again tomorrow. That was it. We're on. <laughs> we are on. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>